The light grows gradually brighter as we move through Advent together. The candle of hope already burns bright. Today, we light the candle of peace. Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Matthew 5, 9. Christ comes as God with us to bring us peace in this life and the promise of everlasting peace. As we are warm and illuminated by the candle of peace, let us celebrate that Jesus is the Prince of Peace and that through him, real peace is found as we join in the Advent candle liturgy. We light the second candle on the Advent wreath with praise to God, who is with us as our shepherd. We are his sheep. Good shepherd, help us to faithfully follow you. Our shepherd came to give his life for us. Good shepherd, lead us to safety and to eternal life. Today, we light the candle of peace. The coming Christ desires for all of us to thrive and to patiently wait for the coming of the day of God. So, may, be, may we be ready, seeking a straight path by letting the light of this candle of peace to guide our steps. Together, let us prepare the way and strive to lead lives filled with hope and peace. Good morning. Let us hear what the Lord God says because God speaks peace to the church. Let us prepare to listen to the shepherd's voice as we join in our call to worship. In the middle of dark times, our Lord cries out, Comfort, comfort my people. When it seems as though we cannot see the light at the end of the tunnel, our Lord says to us, In the wilderness, clear away from the Lord. Make a way in the desert road for our God. Advent is a time to hear and respond, to rise up to worship God from the dark valleys, the mountain peaks, and the green pastures. There is good news to share. And we will shout it out as loud as we can from the highest mountain that like a shepherd, God leads us and tenderly gathers us together. Lord, open our hearts to receive this good news. Amen. Just as God speaks peace to the people through the prophet Isaiah and the good shepherd Jesus, let us greet one another with words of Christ's peace by passing the peace of our shepherd who is coming light of this world. The hope and the peace of Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please join me in prayer. Empower us by your spirit, O God, to hear your word amid the words that we read and spoken this day. Enable us to discern your light and follow the path of peace that you set before us. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson is from the prophet Isaiah's peace-filled message on how God is here and promises to comfort God's people. 
Hear this good news from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Someone told me to shout, and I asked, what should I shout? We humans are merely grass, and we last no longer than wildflowers. At the Lord's command, flowers and grass disappear, and so do we. Flowers and grass fade away, but what our God has said will never change. There is good news for the city of Zion. Shout it as loud as you can from the highest mountain. Don't be afraid to shout to the towns of Judah. Your God is here. Look, the powerful Lord God is coming to rule with his mighty arm. He brings with him what he has taken in war, and he rewards his people. The Lord cares for his nation, just as shepherds care for their flocks. He carries the lambs in his arms while gently leading the mother sheep. These are God's ancient words of light, hope, and peace. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our lectionary Advent 2 gospel lesson today comes to us from the Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John of the New Testament. We're looking at chapter 10, verses 1, 11 through 18. John 10, 11 through 18. Now hear these comforting words during this difficult time. Jesus tells us this day, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. 
The hired hands who is not the shepherd and does not know the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. But I am the good shepherd, says Jesus. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they too will listen to my voice. So that one day there will be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me but I lay it down from my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. I receive this command from my Father in heaven. Beloved, this truly is the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the people of God said, thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer. Lord Jesus, light of the world, the prophets like Isaiah proclaimed your coming as the bringing the gift of peace to your people. Coming Savior, give us now that peace in our hearts as we continue our Advental journey. May your presence be felt, especially in this year of darkness and confusion and help us today to hear your words that will empower us to share your hope and peace with everyone we meet. We ask this all in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. As most of you know, my brother Ryan is a postal carrier. And unfortunately, they have been in the news a lot during our election, haven't they? And personally, I'm really grateful for all the support they've received because they definitely are essential in our culture and the well-being of our communities, aren't they? Anyway, recently Ryan told me a story about a postal worker, a postal clerk whose job was to process all the mail with unreadable addresses. And the process, as you can imagine, have lots and lots of strange addresses and requests. One day a letter came to his desk addressed in a shaking handwriting addressed only to God. No actual address just God on the envelope. Instead of throwing this envelope in the dead, undeliverable pile, he, he felt compelled by the shaky writing, writing to open it up to see what this was all about. And this is what he read. Dear God, I'm a 93-year-old widow living on a very small pension. Yesterday, someone stole my purse with $100 in it, which was all the money I had. Next Sunday is Christmas, and I invited two of my longest time friends over for dinner. Without that money, I have nothing to buy my food with. I have no family to turn to, and you are my only hope. Can you please help? Sincerely, Edna. Now, the postal worker was touched. He showed this letter to his fellow workers, and each of them dug deep in their wallets, and soon they collected $96. And he then put it in an envelope, and he sent it back to the woman. I mean, what a really heartwarming moment for all these hardworking, generous postal workers, right? Now, Christmas came and went, and a few days later, another letter came with that same shaky handwriting to God. And so all the workers gathered around together while the letter was carefully opened. 
And it read this. Dear God, how can I ever thank you enough for what you did for me? Because of that great gift of love, I was able to have a heartwarming dinner with my friends. It could be our very last one. And of course, I told them all about that wonderful gift that you sent me. By the way, there was $4 missing. I think it must have been those thieves at the post office. Sincerely, your servant, Edna. Now that's funny. As the saying goes, it's the thought that counts, right? You see, all we could do is help the best we can, especially when people need it the most. Which brings us one of the most beautiful passages in all of scriptures that you heard read from Margaret from Isaiah 40. And we hear these awesome words again. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. How wonderful those words sound to us on this second Sunday of Advent, during these dark and turbulent times. I mean, how many times have we felt the need for comfort in this last year? How often have we needed those reassuring and, and tender words to ease the hurt and the pain that we feel? And the people of Isaiah knew exactly how we have been feeling lately. You see, they were written for a people for whom things had gone terribly wrong. A terrible calamity has taken place. The nation has been overrun by the Babylonian armies and Jerusalem was destroyed and it was totally laid waste and some 15,000 people were hauled off into captivity to foreign lands hundreds of miles away to this region that we would consider Baghdad today. And they were held there against their will in servitude to their captives for over 70 years, separating parents and children, husbands and wives. Most never, ever, ever saw each other again. But even during these dark and, and troubling and difficult times, the ideal of returning home to Jerusalem to the way things were before, was kept alive and a burning hope for many of those captives. And like some people today, there were those who thought all of this was God's vengeance. You see, some of the Israelites' exiles saw their own destruction and captivity as the punishing hand of God for their unfaithfulness. To those and to us today, the prophet says this, speak tenderly to God, to God's people, and cry to her that her warfare is ended, her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. You see, there has to be a time when we say, enough. It's over. Comfort, comfort my people. Speak softly and tenderly to her. Your past pain and separation is enough. It is more than enough. And it's over and done with. Now, I don't know about you, but boy, do I need this kind of comfort this day. But here's the thing. This word comfort that we just read in Isaiah is not how we define comfort today. It actually has an old and obsolete definition, meaning to make one strong. To make one strong. Now that changes things, doesn't it? It, it certainly has more of a uncomfortable meaning here than the ease and relaxation that we might better describe as comfy, the way we define comfort. To be made strong. Not exactly how we want to have our prayers about 2020 answered, is it? We want things to be easier, more comfy, not to be made more stronger so that we can endure it, right? To be strong, 
To bear one's burden doesn't sound much to me like a miracle or answer to our prayers or their prayers either, does it? You see, God's comfort doesn't mean the situation is going to become easy. The alcoholic will still have to take it one day at a time. Living the rest of our lives without the loved one who has died will never, ever get easier. Coping with a disability, bearing pain, loving someone who is hard to love, wearing a mask all the time, keeping our social distancing even from our family, not worshiping live. All these things are difficult to do. They require strength beyond our own personal abilities and our limits. But here's our assurance. Tender reassurance. Isaiah boldly proclaims, Don't be afraid. Behold, your God comes with strength and reward and vindication, and he will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather us up in his arms and carry us into his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. But that doesn't mean everything will be perfect and comfy, does it? There will continue to be hills and valleys and rough places in our lives that are barriers to God's working in any of us. And they need, according to Isaiah, to be leveled and smooth. And also the Baptist, John the Baptist, said the same words. See, they may be in our lives rocky relationship or strained or broken relationships. And they may be stormy tempers that flare and moody valleys that are unpredictable and even hazardous at times. The stress of the pandemic, the social unrest and isolation that feels like we're stumbling on uneven ground in the dark. These will continue. But God wants us to know in both of our scripture lessons this morning that we need to turn all of this over to the good shepherd. Whatever it is that produces the turmoil, the pressure and anxiety within us. Here we are in the season of Advent. The whole purpose of Advent is to prepare for Christmas. I mean, we could just decorate the exterior and cover up all that's underneath. Or we can make substantial changes that will smooth the way for God's presence to come into our lives in a really special way this turbulent and dark year. We can take a venture of faith and discover an inner strength that is true comfort in the midst of whatever distress or turmoil we find ourselves in. And we find it to our surprise that God, our shepherd, who chose to become the child of Bethlehem, can and will choose to be born anew in our hearts and in our minds. You see, the good news this day is that when we call Jesus our good shepherd, we are naming him the one we know, the one that we listen to, the one that we will follow after, the one in whom we trust, the one we are promised who brings us to safety, hope, and peace. The one who can make us strong so we can survive whatever life throws at us. This is about a God who is with us, our potter who shapes us and molds us and transforms us, and our shepherd who carries us and leads us and loves us. Our Advent journey this year is just the time to prepare for the coming of the Christ child that offers us a chance to find the assurance and the peace of the one of a sheep 
found and cared for sheep. The continued promise that God is with us again in the Prince of Peace, the child of Bethlehem, who will become by his life, his death, his resurrection, our loving shepherd. Comfort. Give comfort to my people, says the ancient but contemporary prophet. And the glory of the Lord then shall be revealed, and we shall see it together. Let us pray. Jesus, our gentle shepherd, we seek to follow your leading through the pasture shaped by your grace, and even through the dark wilderness of our own string. Trusting in your promised care, we depend on your hand to guide us, your love to hold us, your presence to care for us, and your guidance to bless our steps in the future. Loving shepherd, lead us. Powerful protector, guard us. Wise leader, go before us as we commit ourselves to follow you now and to the future prepared to us. We are praise you that your God with us as our shepherd.
God has given us resources, talents, and life itself. So let us respond by offering our gifts, our time, our money, our prayers, and our lives to God as instruments of God's hope and peace in our world. If you are watching or listening right now, take a moment to send in a check to the church or go online to www.secpcusa.org and click the online giving link. We do this in thanksgiving for all our blessings in the sure hope of a peace-filled world to come. Let us pray. O oh God, we offer our gifts to you that may they be used to further the promise of hope, peace, love, and justice in our community and in our world. Empower us, O oh God, to follow these gifts into our community and world so that they and we may become bearers of peace, love, and justice on the earth. Amen. We come the time that we um, come together on our knees and with our hearts and hands and to pray for one another, our joys and concerns. And so, what we again, I instructed you and encouraged you at the beginning of uh, this service to download the bulletins and or the newsletters. And in those, you'll see uh, prayer families we've been praying for and people that needs uh, our prayers in, we, in real and practical ways. So make sure, make sure you do that. There's nothing outstanding that's uh, really going on this week. We know we've been praying for a number of people for a number of weeks from cancers and surgeries and, and deaths. And, and this is a really difficult time from Thanksgiving all the way to Christmas when you realize that you're missing your loved ones. So anyone who lost a loved one this year and years past, do a special memory for them. Offer them a prayer, give them a call, send them a card, let them know that you're thinking of them. We work our way through our church directory this week and we remember um, some great families that are great friends of ours, and uh, especially Margaret with her women's group, and it's Keith and Sue Barkley to remember them. We we'll also remember Joy Barthold uh, this week. She hadn't been here for a number of years, but uh, we do remember her. We also remember Rich and, and Rita Beard. We just ask that you to pray for them and remember them and drop them a note to give them a call and let them know you're thinking of them. Our church we're praying for here in Giddings Lovejoy Presbytery is the Presbyterian Church of Washington there in Washington, Missouri. And they have a fairly newer pastor. Her name is Jocelyn Van Buskirk. So remember them. That's a, a great community. We know uh, a lot of people go down to Washington for various events. And uh, remember that church is very, very active and does a great work within that entire community. And so remember all these things as we come together as a people of God, as we come together on the second Sunday of Advent and go to God, our shepherd, who hears our prayers and loves us. Let us pray. Well, God, on the second Sunday of Advent, we ponder our human predicament. We recognize often how we are like sheep and that we find ourselves overwhelmed by our circumstances, stuck in ditches of various sorts, or given to aimless meandering on paths that lead nowhere, or buried under by seemingly insurmountable thickets and obstacles. And yet you have promised to lift every valley, straighten every crooked path, and level the mountains in order to come to us and lead us home. We hear these, your promises, O God. Empower us by your Spirit to see the way of peace that you set before us. Help us to listen to each other with compassion when we feel fearful or angry or lost. Help us to recognize a shepherd's tender love that is ever before us. Help us to believe the good news of hope and peace we find in the gospel 
so that we could listen to our good shepherd's voice and follow in his footsteps that lead to safety and love. So in peace and hope we find in him, we pray for the world of nations, including our own, as we continue to grapple with the relentless pandemic. We pray especially for the vulnerable among us, for medical professionals and staff, for essential workers, for parents with school-aged children, for the elderly, and for those who have pre-existing conditions, as well as all our students that are going to school these days. Oh God, help us to live responsibly in ways that protect the well-being of others, and send us as your light bearers to those who still sit in darkness, struggling with the crush of poverty, need, illness, grief, or depression. And so we name in the silence before you in our hearts those we know that are in special need of your healing and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Great Shepherd, we pray that you would grant wisdom to the leadership of our local communities, our states, and our country, that they may discern a path forward during these perilous times. Indeed, stir us with peace and hope that you send in light that came to Bethlehem. Stir up our expectations for the wonder he will create as our shepherd in the world, in our lives, in our homes, and in our hearts. In the strong name of the good shepherd coming into the world, Jesus Christ, we pray as we join together that he leads us in by praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear these words on the second Sunday of Advent from God. Comfort, comfort, my people, says the Lord. And so now may God fill you with creation power, guide you as your shepherd, and surround you with his spirit's peace so you can go out into this world that hungers for righteousness. Go out now and prepare the highway for God. Make ready the pass of Christ's peace. Go now. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Have a great week.